Welcome to this web lecture on facility location problems. This is the first of a series of web lectures and the first of two videos that is going to use this example of transportation of wood. And later on we're going to look into the ambulance locations. So what is this wood example that uh, we're seeing here? So Woodworks BV operates several sawmills and transports wood wooden planks to the workshops throughout the Netherlands. They now move to a new market in Belgium and they plan their distribution network. They're asking multiple different questions. So the first one is, can we satisfy the Belgian market through the uh, Dutch sawmills? The second one is where to place a new sawmill. How much capacity sh shall this new sawmill have? Or potentially also do we need multiple sawmills? And does it make sense to include the locations of the forests in this location decision? And for the first question, I would like you to think about what model you can use or which algorithm you can use, because actually for this one you don't need a facility location problem. For this model, you can simply use something that you already know. But now we're going to look into where to place a new sawmill or where to place multiple new sawmills. And for this, we're going to, uh, to model the facility location problem. Whenever we're modeling something, we're going to look into the recipe for formulations, which tells us to identify sets and parameters, to introduce the decision variables, and then to formulate constraints and objective function. So let's look into what kind of sets we're needing in this problem. So first of all, we have a facility location problem or a location problem. Uh, so we obviously need some locations, a set V. And these locations comprise both origin and destination locations, so both sawmills and the workshops. And the problems now, if we're looking at these origins, at the sawmills, is we could place them here or we could place them here. And actually we're placing them on a continuous space, but this is impossible in mathematical models like this one here. So we do need so-called candidate locations. We need to discretize which means that we have to look into feasible choices or logical choices. So for instance, if we're looking into placing sawmills in Belgium, we could just look into the different geographical areas that are there within Belgium and could always go roughly for the center of them, which would be clearly a logical choice for, for the Belgian market. The next thing that we could look into is a grid structure. So we could always go for equally spaced um, for an equally spaced grid and we could place these sawmills there. The problem that we're having here is we have, of course have to be sufficiently small, so we have a sufficiently few grid points that were remaining computationally feasible. So if we increase the set size arbitrarily eventually we're getting computational problems. But on the other side we need to be sufficiently large in the grid, so we need sufficiently large set S such that we have sufficiently small errors because of course it doesn't make a difference if I'm placing a sawmill here or 50 kilometers down the road. So this is the, this is the trade-offs that, we that we're facing if we're looking into, uh, into locating on a grid. For workshops we don't have these problems, that is a lot simpler because we can place the workshops, we can have the workshop locations just from the data that we're given because we're not interested in placing additional workshops. The second step in the recipe for formulations is parameters. And in our case, the parameters are rather simple. So we have a demand at the workshops, which we need to satisfy. We have a cost for traveling. So for every truckload, for instance, of wood that we're transporting from a sawmill I, to a workshop J, we're incurring a cost of CIJ. And then of course we also have costs for opening a sawmill. So it of course costs something to build a new sawmill. And the last thing is decision variables. We need to have decision variables for the amount of flow that we transport and we need a decision variable for the opening decision. So these are the two decision variables that we're considering. Now we can look into the constraints and the objective function. So the first constraint that we have to meet uh, is we have to meet demand. So if a workshop re requires five truckloads of wood, we have to deliver those five truckloads of wood. The second thing that we have to consider is the opening decision. So let's just say we have these five workshops here and uh, then we have three candidate sawmills. If all candidate sawmills are open, 
we can directly put them, uh, directly allocate them to the closest sawmill and transport from there. But if this sawmill, for example, is closed, then we cannot transport from there and we have to reassign these uh, transportation demands to other sawmills. And we're formulating this by saying if yi is zero, so if the sawmill is closed, the flow has to be zero. And the flow from any, uh, fr 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 the flow from this sawmill to any other uh, workshop has to be zero. So we're formulating this by saying um, that the sum overall xij has to be less than or equal to m times yi, and that for all um, sawmills. So the m in this case is just a big M, which means that if the right hand the right hand side is zero, if the yi is zero, which means that the entire flow that leaves this sawmill also has to be zero. What I would like you to think about is which values for big M make sense in this context. And the last set of constraints that we need is the domain restriction variables. So we have to make sure that we don't have any non, not, don't have any negative flow. And we have to make sure that the opening decision is a zero or a one, so a binary decision, but it's not we're opening something with 0 0.5, or we're also not opening one sawmill twice. Now, lastly, we can look into the objective function. And the objective function in our case is quite simply minimizing cost. And cost in our case can stem from transportation, and it can also stem from the opening decision. What I would like you to take away from this example is first of all the basic formulation. Secondly, I would like you to take away what a candidate location is and how we can set candidate locations. What I would like you to look into is first of all this model choice. So what happens if we try to satisfy the demand in Belgium through the, uh, through the Dutch sawmills and how we can model this. Secondly, I would like you to look into the big M formulation. So and which big M makes sense. What we're going to look into uh, through two follow-up lectures is first of all two echelon problems, which means we're also including the locations of the forests when, when placing the sawmills. And lastly, we're going to look into ambulance location. Thanks.